Here I'm going to explain to you very up close three different ways that you can tackle this pointillism project. For this project, I'm using water-soluble Crayola markers. And in the first apple that you see here, I have only used marker. Now, I have used two different shades of red, a gold, a yellow, a couple different shades of green, and there's probably some orange in there too. As well as two different shades of brown. Okay, all of these colors are represented in my apple. Using more than one color helps the apple look realistic. Because when you look at an apple for real, it does have areas that haven't ripened yet, um, different shades of red. And then when you shine that apple up on your shirt before you eat it, you will have different areas of highlight on the outside that catch the light. So I've used these markers and I've just made little tiny polka dots with the marker. And the areas that look lighter have fewer polka dots. And the areas that look darker have more polka dots and they have two different shades of red. So I have a darker shade of red there but the closer I make the dots, the darker that area appears. So we're creating value by adding more dots. I want you to think of this like uh, pixels on a computer image. The more pixels you have per inch, the clearer the image. The fewer pixels you have, the blurrier it gets. So sometimes when you try to download a picture off the internet, it looks very blurry and you can't enlarge it and print it out like you would um, a larger image size. And the reason is because it doesn't have enough dots per inch. So I'm zooming in here so that you can see all of those dots. Okay, so that's how you achieve the pointillism look. Now in my second apple, which I tried to make pretty much the same as the first apple, I've done exactly the same thing. These two styles are identical. I just used a lot of dots. Now for the second one, I'm using a paintbrush and a little bit of water. And I'm just gonna use my paintbrush to um, to blend a little bit. And with just a very little bit of water, I still keep some dots but all of that white from the paper that are underneath the dots, areas that I didn't get, those are going to turn the color of the marker because it is a water-soluble marker. So the marker bleeds, essentially. I'm working on watercolor paper. So my paper will not be affected by the addition of water. And I still have dots but my dots are now um, not showing any of the white from underneath. Now I can do that in parts of my picture, or I could do it on the whole thing. See how that deepens the areas of shadow and highlight? This area that is darker looks darker than the highlight, more so than in this one. And what you can do is after you've added water, um, you can let that dry completely, and then you can come back on top of it with more marker to build up the dots again. And then in this third example, I show you what it looks like if you just use a paintbrush. So on this last example, I used my watercolor paintbrush to paint the shape of the apple, and then I used the tip of the paintbrush to create the little tiny dots that are the pointillism of this project, the pointillism aspect. And when you do that, you can do dots and let them dry and come back and do more dots and let them dry. And by layering those dots, you start to get a lot of detailed pointillism there.
The key to this project is really layering. Layer, layer, layer. Make your dots, go back, make more dots. Um, in this particular area right here, I've come in with a peachy color on top of the red, and that's giving me a lighter area there. So you can play around with how you layer your colors. Dark over light, light over dark. So there are three different ways to achieve pointillism using regular color, a water-soluble marker and a little bit of water. And you don't even need watercolor paint for this. If you have water-soluble marker, you can put the marker down and then with the addition of water, that essentially becomes watercolor paint. Have fun. Enjoy pointillism.